I think this is just going to be a quick one. I wanted to show the manual install process for Stable Diffusion and the automatic 11.11 build of the web UI. I have this coexisting along with another one using a new Conda environment. There is an auto installed script available, but I have a lot of little projects sitting around in Conda environments and I'd rather not risk breaking something. And I don't really feel like proofreading the script, so this is easier. If you haven't installed it already, download and install Mini Conda from the Anaconda site. You'll see that it ships with a version of Python 3.9, which will later upgrade to 3.10. Before I get started, if you're not super familiar with terminals and windows, you can copy and paste in the command prompt with a right click. It'll save you some time. Just copy and paste the commands from the automatic 11.11 manual install section on the GitHub repo page. This web UI build has a few new features that I wanted to try out, and while I haven't explored it much, I think it's pretty stable. It does have one nice feature of reloading the backend without needing that relauncher.py script, so you can recover from out of memory crashes a lot faster. Read the instructions and the troubleshooting section on the GitHub page before doing anything, or you'll probably miss specific answers to your problems, such as what command line flags you need to use for your amount of GPU memory, and if your card supports 16-bit tensors, which NVIDIA 1600 series cards don't. Install Conda for all users when prompted, and then open a command prompt. Create a new Conda environment with the command conda create dash n, and then the name of the environment. In my case, I'll call it auto1111. Activate the new Conda environment with the command conda, activate, and then the name of the new environment. In my case, it's auto1111. Next, I'll check the Python version with python dash dash version. Next, I'll check the Python version with python dash dash version. Since I'm on 3.9, I'll upgrade to version 3.10 with conda install python equals 3.10, and then accept when prompted. When you're installing, what you see on the screen will look slightly different than what is on screen here because I installed yesterday and the packages are all cached. Then I'll install git with conda install git and accept the prompts. Next, I'll install PyTorch and its dependencies. Once that's finished, the next command will check if Torch is correctly installed and if it can see your GPU. I'll make a new directory and then change over to keep everything organized. Now I'll clone the Stable Diffusion and Taming Transformers repositories. Next, install Transformers, Diffusers, and Invisible Watermark requirements for Stable Diffusion. Next, we'll install KDiffusion from a GitHub repository. You can skip GFP GAN if you don't want to use it, can't use it due to memory limitations, or using a standalone real ESR GAN build with GFP GAN integrated. I go over the setup of the standalone Python build of real ESR GAN in, in my Stable Division Part 2 video. Next, change to the Stable Division repository directory and clone the Web UI repository. Now install the Web UI requirements using pip. And finally, upgrade NumPy. Place the model.ckpt file in a directory named stable-diffusion-v1 under the models ldm folder. Read the notes about the command line flags in the troubleshooting section on the automatic 11.11 GitHub repo. 
finally launched the Stable Diffusion Web UI with Python Stable Diffusion Web UI slash Web UI.py and any required flags. In my case, the GTX 1660 requires precision full, no half, and med VRAM for best performance. Once it's loaded up, go to the URL shown in the terminal window. You'll probably want to fire up a copy of GPU Z to keep track of your memory usage, at least at first. That way you can maximize your generated resolution and batch size without too much headache. Also take note that sometimes Windows or Torch grabs too much GPU memory. After it crashes, try clicking generate again. You may be surprised that it works on the second or third attempt. If you haven't tried it out yet, I think this build is definitely worth a look. There's some exciting new features and it seems quite a bit more stable than the earlier builds that I've tried before. I hope this little video helps ease anyone's fears about uh, installing Python and Conda on Windows if they haven't done it before. It's pretty easy to do and if you have an NVIDIA card the process is pretty smooth.